Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Hikar from uh, Brokhype. We are Estonia-based technology-backed blockchain incubator. And uh, today, I'm going to talk about the borderless nation and the borderless fundraising solution powered by blockchain. But before that, I want to introduce myself briefly. Uh, I was in the blockchain space since 2013, and I rebranded ourselves and stepped into Estonia because uh, there was some reason I decided to choose Estonia to be their next head headquarter as our company. Yeah. So the, today, uh, I want to give the one word as uh, today's theme about my presentation. It's the borderless. Borderless. So everything what I talk, you can maybe forget. Uh, let's just walk out this stage and maybe you, you forget about my presentation. But you, uh, uh, only one thing I want you to remember is the borderless of the, my theme. So the first, uh, I want to give one uh, simple quick question. Uh, has anyone in here been to Estonia? Please raise your hand. OK, it's uh, quite a few, like less than 10 people. So for uh, other people, uh, maybe who, haven't, uh, who have never been to Estonia, so Estonia is uh, located in Europe. And it's, Estonia is a paper society and which has successfully to be a digital nation, which use decentralized technology and blockchain into their government system. So the blockchain, like since Satoshi Nakamoto's white paper is out, it's uh, like 2008, 2009, and uh, everyone knows about the blockchain, Bitcoin. But before that, they utilized decentralized technology and the blockchain technology into their government system. And everything, like 99% actually, has done online. The e-voting system, e-prescription system, and taxation. So almost everything has done online in Estonia. So you don't, you don't need to go to city hall. You don't, you don't need to go bank. So you can even open a bank account. You can access an authenticated bank through your digital identification. So only the exception is marriage and divorce. So the marriage and divorce, you need to go to Estonia. But other, th other things, you can, you can do online. So even like, when you go to hospital, then the, all the medical record is recorded and, and, and connected to your digital identification so that you can access and you are the only one who can give the permission to doctor. So all the data is, like all the personal data is belongs to you. And if like government try to access your data, then all the, all the record is stored on the decentralized database so that you can access who, uh, who, who check your data. Like even a police officer try to access your home address, then you can see which officer check the, which data of yours. So this is, the, all the things is actually thanks for digital identification, electronic ID. So all the Estonian citizen has electronic ID, and they can identify themselves through internet. So the Estonian government can make sure that, like behind the computer, it's exactly the human is clicking the bottom. Yeah. So the signing contract is Italy. As I said, everything has done online in Estonia. Uh, they leave you like uh, at, at the same height as Eiffel Tower per month. So what if like, the wall became totally a paper society? It can lead us like, uh, like 100 times or 1,000 times on the Eiffel Tower. So everything has done online. So I've seen this kind of like, advertisement in Singapore too, like DHL. It's, I'm not criticizing DHL's business model, but uh, it says it takes one day to send your contract to companies overseas. But in Estonia, we are laughing at this advertisement. It's, it takes only one minute for signing contract. And if you, if you try to work with an Estonian company and try to sign an agreement, some kind of agree agreement on paper, and uh, maybe an Estonian company try to doubt you, maybe you uh, seem to be kind of scam. So they believe like electronic agreement rather than paper, because paper is not immutable. Even a lawyer tried to tweak a little bit after they showed you contract. But on the internet, like electronic agreement, it is impossible. And then it's, uh, it's inc encrypted, and it's immutable, it, and then it's, it's used decentralized and blockchain technology, which is called DigiDoc. So right now, uh, I, wanna, uh, I would like to say that Estonia is the only country which successfully utilized blockchain and decentralized technology into government system. So Dubai is saying that they try to utilize blockchain technology into government system, and they're going to be the first one. But it is not. It is actually not. Estonia is the first country which utilizes blockchain technology. So right now, uh, I would say that Estonia uh, had done to be a successful digital nation, but their next step is to try to be a virtual nation. So the idea of virtual nation, uh, one example is e-residency program. 
So you can uh, take advantage and benefit from same benefits that Estonian uh, citizens have benefited from, Estonian government, like e-residency program. You can be kind of digital nation, digital citizens of Estonia. You can apply to e-residency online, and it takes kind of 10 minutes. Then what you can do is you can open a company, establish a company online. It takes 30 minutes or less. Then you can even open a bank account without going to Estonia. Is there any e residents in here? OK, one, two, three. Well, maybe tomorrow, if I want to try the same thing. Or oh, you can apply right now. You can apply. Yeah, then uh, at, at the end of my presentation, there will be maybe I'm going to ask the same question later on. Yeah, so it's really quick. You can be the, the, not Estonian citizen, but the Estonian digital citizens. So the idea is like uh, building a virtual community and provide the same benefits to gen like global citizens. And right now, it's uh, more than 33,000 e-residents are there, and 5,000 companies are established online through e-residency program. So the benefits are many, but it depends on your business model. It depends on like uh, what what would you provide to the clients. So if you are providing your services to the like EU citizens, then it might be benefit. So the few things what we have learned from Estonia, I want to share is like the secure and transparent digital identification solution gives power to citizens. Because like every, as I said, everything has done online and it's secure and it's all digitalized using decentralized technology. But the thing, the, it all thanks for digital identification. So that the Estonian government can identify like, citizens so that its security has done online. And the world will become more borderless. So why, what Estonia is trying to do is that build, like becoming virtual nation. So no matter where you were born, where you live, you can be the kind of new economy, no, new, social, new, new social economy. So in location, independent business opportunity for entrepreneurs. So I was born in Japan. In 2014, I found e-residency program. And I was surprised that I can be the kind of digital citizens of Estonia without going to Estonia. But actually, I live in Estonia right now, so I'm not a digital citizen no, no more. And I actually work with government too in uh, encouraging to apply the e-residency as, as, many, as, uh, as many as many people pos possible. So. So digital education is the core element of digital society. So I want you to remember that. But today, it's not the, like, uh, I'm not here for like, uh, the, like, explaining about e-residency. Today is about the borderless fundraising solution. And, uh, but the, the today theme is borderless. So let's talk about ICO. The ICO, why people are attracted by ICO. Not, not only investors, but also companies try to do ICO. Maybe it's because of paradigm shift. Because, maybe because like, ICO is attracting people because wall is becoming borderless. So ICO, there's the, the definition of ICO is not finalized. But I would say that ICO is attracting people because it's a borderless fundraising solution without issuing equity. So if you, if you set a company and you try to like, open up global services, then you, attracted by, you will be attracted by borderless fundraising, fundraising solution. But the one thing I really feel uh, sad about that ICO is like there is thousand or could be millions of useless tokens around the world. Because like, even you try to utilize blockchain technology, but it, like, native tokens, unique token, is unnecess sometimes unnecessary. Going back to the Estonia utilize decentralized blockchain technology, but they don't issue tokens. Without tokens, blockchain services works well. But sometimes, like more likely, like the token might be the lack of usability. Like doctor don't use medical record token. Like patient doesn't use medical record token. So without token, the blockchain solution and the blockchain ecosystem actually works. But uh, still, companies like borderless, like borderless. Society, uh, companies works in borderless society, requires borderless fundraising solution. Then I, we came up with new borderless fundraising solution, which is called initial loan procurement. It's the first digitalized loan agreement on blockchain, and which is legally binding. It's, so it is digitalized using digitalized loan agreement, and it's 
and uh, it's also crypto financing, same as ICO, but it's in the, in the form of loan. And IOP still involves issuing native tokens for providing liquidity. So ICO is consist and formed by three, three different solutions. One is identification solution, and then another, another one is a digital loan agreement platform. And the last one is future loan access token, which provides liquidity to loan. So first two things, identification and like contract service, we work together with Estonian legal professionals and provide the blockchain technology and combine like legality and you know, smart contract. So these simply explains we provide the same benefit like Estonian citizens have benefit from Estonian government to global citizens. So you can use this digital identification to identify yourself, authenticate yourself, and provide digital signature. And using this digital identification, you can sign document online. So you can upload document, and you can digitally sign a contract, and you can send it to another. So that another also can sign contract. So it happens borderlessly. But the loan, so by using this, maybe you can sign a loan agreement like, and, and, and ask for uh, borrowing money from creditors overseas, but it still requires like bank wire transfer and it takes time, it costs a lot. And uh, in terms of like uh, accessibility and liquidity, the traditional loan is like, like th there's zero liquidity. And, but you can cross border using those digital loan agreement system. So the idea to address to provide a liquidity loan, but the one, there's one other problem, like uh, the token, if, if, we, if we provide liquidity to, to loan itself, the token might be considered and highly considered as security. So the, but the future loan access token, it's uh, actually a different story. So it's the new token design. It's a utility and access token provide, provide a liquidity to digital loan agreement. And right now it's based on Ethereum blockchain. So same as ICO token, you can name on it like whatever you want. But the, the, fu the, the feature, the feature on access token has is uh, simple, like simple two features. One, it has the rights to sign a loan agreement. Two, you can transfer the rights to sign a loan agreement. And, and also on, on the smart contract, it's track and store the record of the latest creditor who signs a loan agreement using this token. So I want to explain how does it work. So, we already developed ILP system, and uh, there's, there's few simple steps. So first thing, you, you, you need to submit Ether address. And after that, you create a digital ID to verify the Ether address. So once Ether address is approved, you can also use digital ID to sign a loan agreement, and then you provide a digital signature. It's stored on the blockchain. And after, after that, you send Ether to debtor. So if company, if, if let's say the block type ourselves try to do ILP, and uh, you can sign a long agreement with us. With us. So you, after you sign a long agreement, you send Ethereum. And what happened next? You receive future loan access token for free, basically. It's for free. You sign a long agreement, and you send the money. It's for lending money to companies. So the future loan access token actually has no price, no value. It just has the rights to sign a long agreement. But so you just receive it for free, because you already signed a long agreement. This part is really important, transfer of loans. So the future loan access token doesn't represent that transferring loan itself. Actually, the loan is not transferred. The future loan access token provided accessibility and liquidity with uh, legally sounds like form. So how the tra like transfer of loan works is these five steps. So before the slide, I explain. So creditor A right now has digital loan agreement, and also he or she has tokens, future loan access tokens. So you can actually send tokens to another if somebody wa wa wants it. In that case, let's say I have, I have future loan access token in a loan agreement, and I send, I send my future loan access token to my friends. So let's say creditor A is me. So creditor A, me, sells future loan access token to my friends. Then my friends go into ILP system and submit ETH address and, and do the same thing, what I have done. So submit the Ether address and create digital ID and verify the Ether address. And also using digital ID, my friends sign a loan agreement. So after that, he doesn't, he doesn't even need to send Ether to companies. Because 
I sell future long access token to my friends, then my, my friends send Ether to me. So what he, what he needs to do is only signing a loan agreement using digital ID and a future long access token. So he just, he just showed his uh, future long access token is on his Ether address and verifies it. And what happened next is my loan, my, my loan agreement is like added as zero loan balance. So the before I had like let's say 100 euro equivalent loan balance, but after my friend signed a loan agreement using this future loan access token, so a new loan agreement, like loan, ag loan agreement is newly appeared to my friends, and my loan agreement is added up like uh, and let's say it's a zero uh, loan, loan balance. So the future loan access token is actually utility and access token. It's provided liquidity to loan, but it's not the provided liquidity to loan itself. It has digital lights like uh, this, you know, Apple Pencil. So Apple Pencil only allows to like, sign or draw a thing on an iPad. So iPad is kind of loan agreement. So Apple Pencil is only allowed to draw and sign on an iPad. If you use it for pen or well, paper, it doesn't work. As like usual, usual pen. So let's let's think future long access token as same as Apple Pencil. It works with uh, some specific and specific loan oh no specific loan agreement, and you can sign it. And once you sign it, like new, the digital loan agreement is newly appears to the creditor B. So you can like sell tokens as same as like ICO tokens, but as a company's point of view, the interest payment is much simpler than before. So the company can like, send interest. So interest payment will be done online automatically using blockchain, of course. The like, transaction is like, paid automatically, not bank wire uh, transfer uh, um, involved. It can lower like, transaction cost comparing to bank transfer. And also the interest payment processing is automated. And also the including uh, uh, interest calculation. And also the good thing for regulators' point of view is like it uh, contains fully KYC. Even a token is transferred all over the world, and it's cross-border easily. If you try, to, if you want to be the creditor, then you need to submit KYC and, and provide digital signature. So even you purchase token on the market, like let's say some cryptocurrency exchange, but if you want to be the creditor, then you need to sign a loan agreement. In that case, you obviously need to uh, provide a digital ID. And also, comparing to kind of bond or equity, the, it can manage a like, large number of creditors. Even there are like thousands of token holders, and at the end, they, they sign a loan agreement, so they're going to be thousands of creditors. But the company can identify all those creditors and can transfer and send interest that's the beauty of uh, interest payment solution using blockchain. So at the end, I want to uh, conclude uh, my presentation as uh, borderless. So the world become more borderless. So what if startups can use ILP as like issue their future loan access token instead of issuing equity? So without issuing equity, they can, they can, they, they can be used future loan access token. But a like, company try to do ICO if they actually find there's no fits using native token for ICO, then maybe they can choose also future loan access token and doing ILP. Or municipal government, we, we talk with a uh, few municipal government right now, so they can maybe use ILP instead of issuing municipal bond. Maybe just let's say that as one example, what if Catalonia try to issue uh, Catalonia token uh, through ILP? instead of municipal bond. In that case, like small portion of investors all over the world can participate in the Catalonia's and help their independence. Or social impact bond. Usually it works with uh, uh, the, the large size of investors, but uh, it will be more accessible for individual investors who wants to contribute to the social problems, like small, small and by uh, participating in small amount through, through ILP. There is still a lot of space uh, to, to, and many things 
need, we need to consider about ILP like from different perspectives, like laws and regulation, legality. So now we started to like talk with like so many people in, uh, in the different background expertise, like lawyers also in Singapore and also like in Estonia, in the European Union, Japan, because uh, there there is still some space that that might be considered as a security, but the uh, the good, the good point about IOP is that uh, it utilizes what, and then also you, it utilizes and introduces what we have run from Estonia into the, this IOP solution because uh, the structure what we have done in Estonia is work well more than 10 years and it's highly secured. So I want to I wanna sh share a lot more things about IOP, but the Today, uh, the, the thing I want to share is uh, IOP can be the one solution for borderless nation and also our virtual nation. So companies considering IOP and also uh, lawyers, accountants, and government ent entities who want to uh, share and know more IOP, we are happy to uh, get a lot of questions. And you can check what is ILP online in the blog hive.ee, and we have the white paper in how the uh, technologically the ILP is structured. So you can check online. Yes, um, yeah, thank you very much.